by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to prompt your chatbot to get pristine results using a six step framework inspired by AI guru, Liam Otley. Now this framework would improve your AI responses by up to 300% based on validated research. I've personally been blown away by the results. Welcome back to the Feel Productive channel. My name's Ez, let's get into it. So most people are terrible at prompting AI. They type in a random question, get a mediocre response, and then complain that the chatbot isn't that good. The thing is, chatbot prompting is such a crucial skill these days. And so you really need to know how to prompt effectively. Otherwise, the consequences can actually be quite severe as I came to learn when preparing for a job interview and using really bad prompts and getting really bad information, which I then used in the interview, suffice to say, I didn't get the job. So don't make the same mistake as me. AI really needs work and effort for it to work. Otherwise, it's pretty much a garbage in garbage out type situation. So let's break down the six step framework. So. Each part serves a specific purpose and it will take time to refine each prompt, but once you've done it, you're going to get great results every time. So let's go through each component one by one. First up is role. Now, this is where you tell the AI exactly who it needs to be. So instead of just asking a question, you're essentially hiring the AI for a specific job. So rather than saying, write me a marketing email, you'd say, you are a direct response copywriter with 10 years of experience in email marketing. You could even take this one step further with something like act as a professional email communication specialist who crafts modern, concise, business emails with personality. You understand the balance between professionalism and authentic personal voice, creating emails that feel genuine whilst maintaining business credibility. Now, this sounds like an absolute mouthful, I know, and it sounds insane that you'd need to go to this level of detail, but this technique alone can improve the performance by 15 to 25%. So the AI does actually perform better when it has a clear identity to embody. So this step is an absolute must. Okay, next is task. And this is what most people think of when they interact with their chatbot. So they just tell it what it needs to do. Now your task should always start with a verb. So generate or write or analyze or create, but be specific about what you want. Don't dump everything here. That will come later. Speaking of specific, the third component is specifics. And this is where things get interesting. There's a technique called emotion prompt and research shows that adding emotional phrases can improve AI performance by up to 115% on complex tasks. So you might add something like, this is very important to my career, or I greatly value your thorough analysis. It sounds weird, but it works. And when you think about it, if you were to give some work for someone to do for you, and you emphasize just how important it was to you that they get it done, the chances that they put more effort into it are much, much higher. And the same logic applies with AI. The fourth component is context. And this is where you explain the bigger picture. Why does this task matter? What's the business situation? What environment is this AI operating in? The more context you provide, the better the AI can tailor its response to your actual needs. And then we have examples. So this uses something called few shot prompting where you can boost the performance by around 14% basically by telling the AI exactly what good output looks like by providing three to five examples. This is incredibly powerful because the AI can pattern match to your preferred style and format. And finally, there's notes. And this is your last chance for fine tuning everything, including formatting requirements, things you definitely don't want, tone adjustments, and any final reminders. It's like having a conversation with someone and saying, oh, and just one more thing. And I'll explain more about why that's important later in the video. By the way, I put a link to a full prompting framework guide in the description below. And there you'll find all the material you'll need to get started, including a master prompt prompt, which you can use in your own chatbot. So you can create your own prompts with minimal effort. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech and productivity content. I know you want to. Now, let me show you this in action with a, a real example because seeing the difference is honestly mind-blowing. 
Here's probably quite an extreme example of a basic prompt most people would use, like write a cold email for my design agency, and that's it. And you'll get a generic forgettable email that sounds like every other cold email. But using our framework, the same request becomes, act as an experienced business development specialist for creative agencies with a proven track record of securing high value clients through strategic outreach. You understand the unique challenges small tech startups face and excel at crafting messages that resonate with busy founders and decision makers. Generate a compelling cold outreach email for a boutique design agency targeting small tech startups, focusing on how exceptional design can accelerate their growth, improve user acquisition, and increase investor appeal. Now you can see there's a whole bunch more to this prompt. It's really, really molding the AI into a specific direction. You can see in the specifics where I haven't actually mentioned anywhere else, I say create an email that feels personalized and research driven. Keep the tone professional. So this is where you can really refine in bullet points the result that you want to see. And then in the context, we've said, hey, this email will be used as a template for outreach to 50 plus carefully researched tech startups. So it's really giving giving it like good context. And then don't forget to leave it some notes. So you can see here in the notes, research each startup thoroughly, avoid design jargon and focus on business metrics and outcomes. This email must feel like it comes from someone who genuinely understands their business challenges. So there's kind of like rehashing of the same sentiments in different types of wording in different parts of the prompt. And the difference in output quality is absolutely insane. There are some limitations to keep in mind. Obviously, this framework works best for complex tasks. So, you know, if you require creativity and analysis, this is great. But for simple questions that you might ask Google, you probably don't need to do this. It's kind of overkill. And if you're using these prompts um, and you're paying per token, then obviously you've got longer prompts will take up more tokens. So there's maybe a, a higher cost associated with this type of framework. Some more things to understand about why this framework works so well. So there's something called lost in the middle effect, which can impact performance by up to 56% if you ignore it. And it's basically where AI models pay more attention to information at the beginning and at the end of your prompt than stuff in the middle. And that's why the notes section is so powerful. It's your final opportunity to emphasize what matters most. And you know what's really interesting about that is it's the same with humans in that scientific research shows that people remember things at the beginning and at the end and things in the middle are always a lot more opaque. So treat your AI not as a machine but just like you would another human or colleague. There's also something called chain of thought prompting, which can improve results by up to 90%. And this is where you ask the AI to think step by step or show its reasoning process. And you can incorporate this into any part of your framework by adding phrases like, think through this step by step or explain your reasoning. And another pro tip is to start with a simple version of your prompt. So maybe just use role, task and context and then gradually add specifics, examples and notes to refine the output. I found that most of my best prompts have kind of evolved over several iterations. And the emotion prompt technique I mentioned earlier might sound gimmicky, but the research is solid. So phrases like this is vital to my career or I greatly value your thorough analysis, genuinely improves the response quality. The AI doesn't have feelings, but it was trained on human text and those emotional cues seem to trigger more careful, thoughtful responses. Oh, also another major thing you need to do is to use markdown formatting when creating your prompts. So markdown is a simple way to add formatting like bold, italics, lists, and links to text by, by typing a few special symbols instead of using buttons or menus. And crucially, it's how LLM engineers interact and tune LLMs in the back end. So it makes sense to use it as well and to eke out any final gains you can get from your prompts. So now you've seen the six part framework that can transform your AI interactions. If you're someone who uses AI for work or content creation or problem solving, this structure will genuinely change how effective your prompts are. And please do share them with anyone that you feel 
will benefit from it. And remember, good prompting is a skill like any other skill, it gets better with practice. So you have to put the initial work in, but the results will not only be much better, but you'll also save a ton of time for each result. And if you want to see how else I save myself time, actually about two and a half hours a day using all kinds of cool tech stuff, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I'll see you there.